Welcome back to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody. My name is Ross. This is Pool of Radiance. We are about to start the graveyard, which is my favorite part of the entire game. I've been saving it for next to last. After this, we do the castle where Tyrant Thraxus lives. I've been saving this for next to last for two reasons. One, it's actually pretty difficult. And two, it's just so much fun. To get there, we're going to go to the passenger dock. And we're going to take the north side of the bay. Um, in between sessions, I leveled up Helper. Helper leveled up as a fighter. Helper's also using a composite shortbow plus one, replacing the regular shortbow plus one we had found earlier. Uh, so we're going to take, we're going to leave actually. Hit go up one on the north edge of the city. You leave, enter the northern city gates or enter the graveyard. Go for the graveyard. Sky darkens, fierce gusts of wind howl past, and the ground shakes as peals of thunder rock the land. Swirling murk hides what lies ahead. So an explosion of lightning reveals the nightmare scene of a graveyard turned upside down. Skeletons. Claws rather from the soil and attempt to drag you down. Undead are just my favorite. Just my faves. So now our cleric, Cheese, is a high enough level where he can destroy undead of a certain hit dice, challenge rating for more modern um, d, d settings. Instead of turning them, he can destroy them with his holy symbol just by showing it to them. This game's a little bit weird with that. Sometimes it's very effective. Sometimes it only affects a few things. I'm going to try and let them surround me a little bit. Try and maximize the effects of it. I mean, you know, undead are like... They're undead. They're unlife. They're the antithesis of everything organic and holy. Completely unnatural. Created by something. The helper's using a morning star. And... I think this game subtly lets bludgeoning weapons do a little bit more than bladed weapons. Don't exactly know what the bonus might be. Or the detriment might be for a bladed weapon. Maybe it gives them resistance to slashing. Although that's not really a thing in 2nd edition. Uh, what is the thing in second edition though is not being able to hit something with a certain magical weapon undead many many times need like a plus one weapon to hit or better some of them need a plus two some even need a plus three and then some rare occasions plus four or plus five to even hit them do any sort of damage to them whatsoever Well, the quarterstaff was a bludgeoning weapon. Only did three damage. Helper's just a, just a, just a boss, I guess. He's super swole now. Turn. Okay. We're gonna turn on dead to see how effective it is. Not bad. It does also feel like to me. If your cleric has, there's a shop in the in the civilized area where you can purchase holy symbols. There's a wooden one. Um, there's an intermediate one. I forget what it's made of. Then there's a silver one. Maybe having the silver one increases the potency of turning undead, but I can't prove that. I can't say that with any sort of definitive certainty. Oof, that didn't do any damage at all. There we go. Another thing too, undead usually don't retreat. In this game, for sure. Undead are not hive mind, but they are... Um, I, did, I mentioned that they were created by something. It's not like they're part of a hive mind with their creator. And anything else that they've their creator has created. 
Undead or tunnel vision, they're singularly focused on one thing, which is the destruction of life. And that's true across all undead, really. At the core of their being, they exist to end life. That's really it. Zombies are driven by a hunger. Skeletons are just persistent. You find someone dead, great, let's destroy it. Um... So they won't retreat because retreating doesn't... Survival's not a thing to them since they're already dead. The concept of survival just doesn't never crosses their undead mind or their train of thought, if they even have a train of thought. <clears throat> they're just solely focused on killing anything that's alive. And that seems a little bit simplified. And it is. <clears throat> I am simplifying it. Because obviously there are some undead who have much stronger machinations. Undead like vampires. Who are manipulative and uh, do desire things outside of just destruction or chaos. Liches, same thing. Liches desire knowledge and power. Death Knights. <clears throat> also a very different type of undead. I mean, I, it's an oversimplification to say that all they want is chaos or uh, death of anything living. But at the core of their machinations and their broader desires is that incentive. <laughs> it's still there. Turn. wasn't bad. And when I'm a dungeon master, I don't, I don't run undead exactly that way. But I always have that in mind. So when I'm role-playing undead, those elements are certainly there. And it can be something as, um, something as trivial not trivial. That's not the right word. It could be something as minor as just a narration of what's happening. Uh, you swing your axe in a wide arc and it hits the zombie right in the shoulder, nearly severing its arm. The zombie makes no noise or any sort of motion to indicate that it felt any of that, even though its arm is not dangling from its, from its socket. <clears throat> Does it mean anything? Not in the long run. Will it freak your players out? Maybe. Because, I mean, they don't... They don't either feel pain or care about pain. It's not part of their nature. Skeletons, same thing. They don't have any vocal cords. They can't... vocalize anything. <clears throat> pain... Uh, war cries, none of that stuff. They're just animated skeletons. Clicky clacking around trying to murder you. Which is scary enough, I should say. I've never seen a complete set of human bones. Personally, with my own eyes. But my imagination <laughs> is suggesting to me that seeing a set of them Walking and trying to murder me. Pretty scary. So here's the map for the graveyard. The Vellingen Graveyard. <coughs> Vellingen Graveyard. So it's this map is really confusing. We're gonna make like a U shape. We started it in the in the top left of that map there. We're gonna make our way down and around a few of the buildings. There are, there are, um, there are, I would say three or four sections to the graveyard. Um, and narratively you sort of uncover as you go along that a vampire has invited or created specters and the specters are the things creating undead, raising bodies as undead. 
One specter is making skeletons. One is making zombies. The two of them are in this section. This is why we're fighting skeletons and zombies, you'll see. Um, and juju zombies, too. One specter is making whites. We'll see whites later on. And I think there's a section where you fight two specters at once. I don't remember exactly what they're doing. And I think one of the whites might be making ghouls. Uh, one of the specters, rather, might be making ghouls. I actually forget how many specters there are. There are enough. Remember, if a white hits you, it drains you of a level. It drains you of that experience. And if a specter or a vampire hits you, it drains you of two levels. No bueno. Um, the vampire fight might be the most difficult fight in this graveyard, um, but very closely on its heels is a fight with some mummies. Now, mummies are difficult because they frighten you at the outset. There's a thing called a dreadful glare. The sight of them might cause you to paralyze, become paralyzed in fear. And then this game it renders you helpless. And they just one hit you and you're down. Also, when they hit you, you become diseased, which means you can't regain hit points until you've been cured of the. the... But we can deal with that. All right, now it's going to be an army of skeletons. The Enclave is guarded by a skeleton army. A very small one. So I'm recording this. Um, <clears throat> I'm recording this the two days after I missed a live stream for being ill. I apologize if my um, throat's a little scratchy, if I look a little unkempt, because I am. Uh, I did manage to turn. I did manage to stream last night. We did a marathon of a Heroes of Might and Magic 2 stream, which you can absolutely catch on playlists here on YouTube associated with this channel. One for Heroes of Might and Magic 2 Archibald's campaign. And we also recorded a video for standard games last night as well. We did one of the expansions, an expansion scenario I'd never seen before. It was really exciting. Next is a giant skeleton. You find a giant skeleton and its retainers. Just if you want to check those out on YouTube. Here's a Might Magic 2 is a fantastic game. Uh, it's in the top three or top five for me, as well as this game is. Different game than this, though. Oh, yeah, you smash that skeleton. Smash him. Smash him. Hmm. Do we want to cast spells here? I don't believe we need to. It is very difficult to rest in the graveyard. You definitely need spells against every specter, every white, and of course the vampire. So, if you need to rest, my suggestion is actually to go back to town. Town is not too far away. Um, you're going to want to rest there. And uh, there, like any other quest in this game, there are set encounters. Everything we've done so far, every fight is a set encounter. Once you complete them, they're not gonna like respawn or anything. So if you wanted to crawl the graveyard one piece at a time, you are very welcome to do that. This game is very forgiving with um, that sort of approach. Ouch. Helper, no. Ow. We're gonna have to turn pretty soon. Turn the undead. You don't have to, but I'm going to. Turn. Doing this quest with multiple uh, priests, multiple clerics, it's fun. They both get to turn different times in the in the fight. 
It makes these fights pretty, pretty uh, manageable. There's absolutely no rule against having multiple clerics in your party. Or multiple fighters, multiple magic users. As you can clearly see, we went all in on magic users. Alright, we did it. First boss battle's done. You also get a crap ton of experience. You find a marble chest, open it? Yes. Look at that, 7600 experience. Man. I mean, these fights are not easy for lower lower level parties. Oh no, there are items in here. Oh, all those cleric scrolls are scrolls of restoration, which are helpful, but we're not going to use. If we lose levels, I'm actually just going to load the game. <laughs> the reason is, restoration will bring you back to the level you lost. So if you were level six and a, and a specter hits you and drains you two levels to level four, the restoration spell will bring you back to level six. However, any experience that you had earned between level six and seven, just gone forever. And it's not a huge deal because most of our characters have maxed out in level. Hamburger, for instance, cannot level up again in magic user, but he can level up in fighter at least, I think, one more time. A helper can level up as a fighter and a magic user and a thief. So they need the experience. Cheese is maxed out and the juice is maxed out. So technically we could, if cheese or the juice lost levels, just use restoration on them. We wouldn't have to worry about losing progress because we're not using any of that progress. A small army of skeletons rushes from the tower. My one criticism of this game it's not really a fair critique because I'm looking at it from a modern standpoint, or at least from a perspective of one who plays a lot of tabletop role-playing games um, in the year that this was recorded, which is 2022. And mind you, this game came out in 1988. Um, but the critique is that Fights like this get pretty repetitive. And I can see how frustrating it could be for people playing this for the first time, like, I just did this fight, I'd do it again. To a certain degree, this edition of Dungeons and Dragons was kind of like that. The challenge was not um that sophisticated it was can you survive basically or how long can you survive how much loot can you plunder before you finally decide it's time to pack it up go back to town there's a twitch stream i would recommend to everybody called the stream of blood and for a little while i'm not sure if they're doing it anymore i hope they are but for a little while at least, noxious fumes pour from the tower doorway, making it impossible to see inside. Um, for a little while they did, on Tuesday evenings, they did this thing called Thaco Tuesday. It's pretty clever, I know. But Thaco Tuesday, they would play Dungeons and Dragons, the original edition. And the first time I discovered them, they were doing the Caves of Chaos, which is one of the first Dungeons and Dragons experiences I ever had. Um... And I remember playing the advanced Dungeons and Dragons version of it, which is second edition, which is what the Pool of Radiance is. And they streamed from, I don't know what time zone they were in, but for me it was 9 p.m. They said, we're going to go from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. I don't care what's happening, where you are, what you're doing. At 11 p.m., you guys get teleported back to town with any loot that you have. That's it. So you had this just two hours of dungeon crawling, pure dungeon crawling every week in that old D&D style. And it was marvelous. They did a really good job with it too. Everybody who played was a really good role player as well. Really good role player. I don't mean a critical role voice acting type role playing, which is great. They were just, they had characters who had authenticity and they stayed true to them. And, 
you know, it, they weren't that dynamic. <laughs> um, because that, that module is basically kill stuff, get loot. That's it. That's, that's the case of chaos. There are caves nearby. You can plunder them for money. And that, that's exactly what they do. And they don't make any, no mistake about it. That's what their characters were there for. They did it their own way. And uh, I just, I would strongly recommend Stream of Blood. Okay, let's see what these noxious fumes are all about. Oh, cheese. Noxious fumes tear at your throat as you crunch through piles of dried bones. 10 points of damage. Specter. You're surprised a shadowy form creating new skeletons. So this is the specter creating the skeletons. Look at that animation. Blah! Ghostbusters, what do you want? All right. Magic missile. Oh, can't give him a turn. Can't give him a turn. Oh, come on. Magic missile. Two points. We did it. Vector is killed. 3,300 experience. Not a bad. It's a lot of money. We're going to leave behind. Cool. All right. We beat the first specter. That's one specter down. I don't remember how many to go. Oh, you managed to sneak up on some zombies. All right. Now we're in the zombie part of town. We just cleared the skeleton part. Now we're doing zombos. Turn. Actually, so far, turning undead has been pretty, pretty darn effective. I'm really, I'm really happy with this. Sometimes it's not so effective. That time it was excruciatingly effective. Nothing in that building. Um, down there is where the whites are. This is where the juju zombies are. Zombies shuffle down the stairs. All right, there's a lot of zombies. I think I'm gonna split him out wide that way. Yes, I am going. Plug the hole. Turn. Okay. Still pretty effective. That was the least effective one yet, but I'm still pretty happy with that. I'm did you not, sometimes it only gets one or two. And we haven't seen in this, this particular playthrough, we have not seen whites or ghouls yet. Kind of excited for that. Uh, they are in the textile house, but we didn't encounter any undead in the textile house. We got real lucky there. They're almost impossible to avoid. You know, cheese might be going down pretty soon. Okay. <laughs> cheese went down. This is bad. Uh, bandage. Before we do the juju zombies, I'm going to go back to town and get um, cheese rested up, which means I want to cast some spells to speed this up a little bit. No. Not you. You swing away, man. Right? But you can cast. Wow, magic missile's pretty strong. I'm also going to show you guys lightning bolt. It's not going to bounce off any walls, but uh, this is what it looks like. It keeps going until it hits another target or bounces off a wall. It's the targets that got before. Pretty great spell. It does as much damage as Fireball. Just does it in a line instead of like a sphere. All right, I'm just gonna head back to town, and uh, when we pick it back up, we're gonna go up these these stairs and fight the Juju Zombies. Okay, almost ready to fight some Juju Zombies. It should be noted that um, whenever you defeat a Specter, you can go back to town and go to City Hall and collect a reward. 
Um, I didn't do that. They kind of, you're going to get all the experience no matter when you go back. You can finish the entire graveyard. They'll give you the experience that you're owed. But you are trying to level up your party earlier on in the game. If you don't save it for the end like I did, it is a really good way to level up very quickly. So the city hall will give you a reward for taking out each specter, basically. Let's fight some juju zombies. A zombie with gray, leathery, hard skin gazes at you with hate-filled eyes. There he is. All right. So. What's the difference between a zombie and a juju zombie? A couple of distinct mechanical differences. Juju zombies are immune to magic. Uh, they have more hit points, better armor class, all that. They're also... Very sentient beings. They are aware that they are zombies and they weren't before. And they're really upset about that. <laughs> they're just filled with anger and malice. Imagine knowing you're a zombie. Various objects are scattered about. We pick them up. Heck yeah. Pick up scattered objects always. Ocean. Land. Those are more. Um, restoration scrolls. Nothing else here. Sick. All right, that little this building here. That's where the mummies are. I'm not ready to fight them yet. We're gonna do some whites. We're gonna fight some whites. Y'all ready to see some whites? Find some undead. Here they are. Now that's a white. Because this is thriller, thriller night. Oh my god, there's a mummy here. Oh, they all have to make saves against being frightened. No. All right, I gotta use a fireball. I don't wanna, I don't want that mummy. Only 17. Are they resistant to, uh... Oh! <laughs> Turn. Oh. <laughs> I don't want them to train me of my levels. Mummies don't drain you of levels, but I don't want to get diseased either. <laughs> I don't know if my mic is picking out these noises I'm making, but like my heart is in my throat every time they swing at me. Oh, I wasn't expecting a mummy to be with them. That's no buena. Whites appear from behind the tower. Okay, no. No mummies this time. All right, I turned every single one of them. That's good, I think. God, I hope they can get away. I don't want to have to hunt them all down. That would just be annoying. Oops. Yes, a board spell. Thought I had another magic missile. Move too quickly. Ah, oh, God, I gotta hunt them down. All right. Magic missile. Oh, 
Come on, you only have nine hit points left. You call yourself a wizard. Magic missile! Pick up <gasps> Oh, I didn't mean to move that close to them. I'm so stupid. Oh, this was real dumb. Real dumb of me. This was real dumb. Oh, yeah, you see that? So, the juice hit the white and did zero damage because you punched it. You need a magical item to even hurt. Okay. Hit it. Okay, let's go fight another another specter. Lower chambers filled with glass and fur objects of all types. Sharp crack splits the air and you are stung. Juice is hit for four points of damage. That's cheap. Alright, you specter bastard. You surprise a figure as it summons a white. Oh my god. You're a thief. Hit it from behind. No. 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 Okay, good. Nice. Alright. Spectre 2 down. I think there might be one more fight with whites. There we go. Dark bend creatures rush swiftly at you. Oh no! There's a mommy. Don't. Don't. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Fear does eventually wear off, but we do have to protect um, the juice whilst she is paralyzed by that spy said fear. Come on, dudes. There we go. She's back. Hmm. The reason why there are mummies in these fights, when there usually there aren't, is because we're such a high level. The game is trying to rebalance the encounters. You challenge us. Wow, that's a lot though. That's a lot to throw at us. So that cross looking building right to our right there. That's where the mummy, uh, not the mummy. That's where the vampire's coffin is. This is where we fight two specters at once. Shadowy forms flow from between the uh, floor, the door, crack, whatever, and attack. <laughs> Eligible, I know. We got a lightning bolt. We also have a fireball. No, no. Ouch. Okay. Worth it. Voice speaks. Come, my brave adventurers. You must take my gifts to better fight the evil that has come to the city. From the magically lit tomb, something arises and gives you lots of cool stuff. Nice. That's good stuff right there. It's just good stuff right there. All right. 
We're almost done with the graveyard. That's really sad. That's really sad. Let's go do the, the mummy fight. Hello. You're approached by a man clad in mystic robes. Hail, noble adventurers, he calls. I would ask you to help me and end this vile undead curse. Let him join the party or send him away. Uh, we're going to send him away. We don't need him. Secondly, he's got really cool stuff on him. <laughs> then die, you scum. The man spits. Sure. Crap out of him. Who is not overloaded? There we go. Jerk. He's not a bad NPC to have, but we don't we don't need him. All right. So there are three or four mummies in this room, which means all four of our characters have to make saving throws against each one. So three or four times, however many there are. This is why this is such a difficult encounter. With slow, ominous creaks, mummies open their sarcophagi. All right, just the juice. I can live with that. Cheese is diseased. His boom was on the cheese. Oh, hamburger's diseased too. Oh, no. His bum was on the Swedish. Swedish. If you don't get that reference, it's... Somehow it's become obscure. My bum is on the cheese. My bum is on the cheese. If I get lucky, I might get a disease. Oh, I can't cast it. It's a downtime spell only. Oh, cheese is getting watered. Cheese has seen better days. Swan of Magic Missiles has gone the distance. Please. Boom. All right, we did it. We get any treasure? No, of course we don't. No treasure to be had. Okay. Magic. Asked. Cheese is cured. Hamburgers cured. And I think that was it, right? Status. Okay. It would say status diseased. All right. So we have the Afrit bottle as well. He'll just appear. Um, when we, when we fight the vampire just the first time, not the second time. And yes, we fight the vampire multiple times. I'll explain why. So. Um, when vampires are destroyed, their essence turns into like a mist and it goes back to their, their coffin. And as long as they're undisturbed, their, their corporeal form will reemerge. I think it takes like a day or two, but they come back. So you must destroy their coffin. Inside the ruins of a black marble crypt is a coffin filled with dust. Among the piles of dust are several broken crosses, vials of spilled holy water, and a scroll. Do you read the scroll? Yes, the scroll is placed in your journal as entry 43, and I'll read that to you now. This one's pretty interesting. A loosely wrapped scroll. Armald the Good, paladin and brother of Taimalg the Invincible, and Sarasim of Teshwave, the high priestess of Sun, attacked the denizens of the Valhingan graveyard with a holy vengeance. They came in search of Taimalg and his mercenary band who assaulted the graveyard and did not return. Sarasim used her holy power to dissipate and turn the undead that confronted them. Aramalg wielded his vorpal sword and slew the few that fought her power. Together, Aramalg and Sarasim penetrated the graveyard to an evil marble crypt. They found and splintered an empty coffin, blessing the remains and sprinkling it with holy water. Then they confronted the owner of the coffin, a creature of great evil, and the leader of the undead in Valhingen, an ancient vampire, the three began a furious melee. The vampire was swayed by Aramalg and Sarasim's power, but would not be turned. The vampire shouted, I've defeated Taimalg and his warriors. I will defeat the brother of Taimalg as well. The vampire summoned an army of rats and tried to charm Sarasim to his side, but to no avail. Sarasim resisted his charm, and Aramalg charged through the massed vermin. The vampire fell before the might, mighty blows of Aramalg's holy sword and Sarasim's enchanted mace. 
defeated, the ancient vampire dissolved into gas, fled to his coffin. Finding the coffin destroyed, he returned to solid form and screamed. Seizing the moment, Aramel grabbed the vampire and held him with all of his strength. Cersei ran up and drove an oaken stake through the vampire's heart. Aramalg and Saracen performed the proper rituals to banish the vampire forever. Then, wounded, Aramalg and Saracen left Valhingen graveyard. It was beyond their power to completely cleanse the evil place, where they had ex ex extracted proper vengeance for the death of Taimog and his troops. Basically telling you how to destroy the vampire. You want to do anything with a coffin? Yes. We're going to destroy it. Coffin makes a mess on the floor. All right. A vampire. The first vampire fight is through a secret door in the northeast corner. Second one is back in that cross shaped marble crypt. Wooden stairs lead into a pit. Do you go down? Yes. Chamber lights up to reveal a tall, pale man with very white teeth. There's our Efreet friend. He's on our side. I'm going to use the Wand of Lightning, I think. Oh, tried to charm the juice, but to no avail. That's right, you jerk. Cannot be swayed. I will not be swayed. Eat a magic missile in the face. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Really trying to charm everybody. One time, I played this, I did this fight, and the vampire charmed the Efreet. The <laughs> first thing in the fight, I freaked out. I was like, no! <laughs> vampire turns into a vapor cloud and floats away. Look, you find the vampire's treasure trove. Do you take it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I actually do. I don't think that's a magical shield, actually. Okay. Here we go. Vampire fight part two. There's a vampire here. I'm gonna mess him up. Got him. Easy peasy. Lemony squeezy. All right. Should be able to rest here now. Cool. We did it. All right, let's go back to town and collect our reward. We're going to offer any commissions. I must see if you're due a current reward. If we've been informed you have eliminated some undead from the graveyard, here's your reward. Sweet. Get the gems and the jewelry. Council has voted a special prize for ending the graveyard menace. Here's your reward. Oh, 14,000 experience points. So sick. Now for the following, these are all the commissions currently available. The only thing left is the castle. So I did some uh, identifying of stuff. Cheese is now wearing plate mail plus two. And also ring of protection plus two, but I'm not sure if it's working. <laughs> I think we're already... Uh... Yes, helper's uh, level. Six magic user. Learn that lightning bolt. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I think we're already as good an armor class as we can get. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. But the next time. Yes, level 7 fighter, thank you. Heck yeah. Next time, next episode, we will be doing the first part, level 7 thief. Alrighty then. Thank you so much for watching Kelvin's Coin TV. The next episode will be the castle. Valuable castle will at least do the outer edge of the castle. There's an outer edge and there's an inner edge. Outer edge takes some time. Inner edge takes some time. I will see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying this playthrough of Pool of Radiance. Hope it's helping you in your own playthrough. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, or if you'd like me to see me do anything else pertaining to Pool of Radiance. I love this game, so I'll pretty much do everything. Thanks for watching.